Hello, welcome to Mantle Farm for our beekeeping video here on YouTube with myself, Josh and Roger. As we're getting towards the end of this year's season, we leave our hives alone in this week's video. But Roger pops by for a chat about Varroa and various other beekeeping topics. Any questions? Leave them in the comments below. Uh, yeah, so we've taken the dry out and we've got, was that the first or the second dry um, happy gold we've put in? Second now. Yeah, second we're on one. the second one. So it had been in for a week, pre the first one. We put the other one in and it's now been in for a week on the second one. So, and we've got uh, a bit more of a varroa drop than we had with the first one. That's interesting. I suppose... It's reasonable because you're sort of reinforcing the the dose. Um, so, do you think that sort of could also be to do with the fact that we've got brood a lot? We had more brood sequestering varroa hmm. for that first two weeks, and maybe we've a lot of it's hatched, and the threat it might have yeah, dropped away. Because I mean, looking at this, we've probably got what a few hundred on here. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's more than a few hundred. I would say possibly up to a thousand mm. on there, but I'm. You know, are we going to count them? I don't think so. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I mean, we've got, got all sorts of interesting bits of stuff here. That's, I think that's a bit of the Varroa gel that's dried out and been shoved um, about. Yeah, these bits here, these fluffy white bits, um, I think they're the gel. Oh, yeah, it looks like There's it. A bit, of, a bit of honey there that's been dropped by somebody. Um, we've got a bit of... That will be sort of cappings that they've taken off. And there, in the, that bit there, that's uh, an actual flake of wax. Uh, another one there, as produced by the, the bees. Um, so, they, I mean, they, they are quite big. Um, you know, we think of them as, as being almost microscopic generally, but when you actually see them, they're, they're, they're actually quite big individual bits. Um, and those, of course, they will then sort of transfer to their, their mandibles and, and form into the cell walls and, and the septum and all the gubbins that goes with the a honeycomb. Um, but yeah, we, there's not, I mean, there's a bit of, uh, looks like a bit of bee or something in there. It's a head a or something, there's one over there, isn't there's it? There's a head, head there, I think. And a leg. <laughs> and a head there. Bit of something there, but yeah, I mean, we've got all kinds of old dross on here. Um, <laughs> Should we be alarmed about anything that we're seeing? I don't think so. Um, yeah, I mean, there are possibly more varroa on here than I expected to find because mm. we haven't seen much evidence of. of um, the things that varroa seem to vector, like deformed wing virus and uh, and um, things like that, but mm. obviously um, we didn't. We, you know, we obviously realised that there were, were varroa on our bees, but so they'd be the phoretic. But these would be mites. the phoretic mites. Yeah. I mean, they're all they're all adult. They're all I, I can't see any sort of tail ones. Um, so, you know, mostly these are actually adult mites that um, would presumably have been on the bees or, yeah, I mean, they, they do run about on their combs as well when they, um, you know, they sort of jump off one bee and then, and then go searching for something else to do. And uh, you do occasionally see them trotting about on the, on the combs. Mm. Um, so, and presumably, well, <clears throat> again, I've read somewhere that the, the actual adult mite uh, sets up a feeding station on the, on the larva before it lays its eggs so that when the eggs hatch, the small varroa nymphs, whatever they are, then have a site prepared where the, the, the cuticle is already, is already broken so they can, they can feed more easily. Um, but, 
I'm, you know, I, mean, I may be misremembering that. I don't. I don't. Um, I'm not sure. So if uh, where are we now? So we're what mid September coming to late late, late September now. Third week in September. Um, people should, if they're using Apigard, be at least well onto the second sachet now, shouldn't they? Should be yep. Should have done two weeks already, and yeah, hopefully be onto the the final four week home run. I mean, I would hope that they. Um, start that in what the middle of August, yeah, really, because it is um, it is temperature sensitive, apparently. And uh, so, you know, you, if it says the temperature has the ambient temperature has to be above 15, then that is not going to happen at the end of September, no, reliably, no, in most of the country. So once people have done their treatment, um, should they be thinking about? Do they need to do any winter feeding? And well, that uh, depends mm. entirely on on <clears throat> their particular beehive and their situation. Down here in the south, um, the well, where I am, I've seen buds on ivy which are about to open. Mm. Uh, I haven't actually seen the open flowers. I saw some today, just um, down here. So we have got some here. So, but you know. When the when at this end of the country, because it's so much warmer, um, when the ivy's in flower, which will go from sort of now until well, there's still be in flower at Christmas, in fact. Mm. Um, so there are there is nectar and probably pollen there for the bees to collect, and they do like seem to like it. Um, so, providing the weather's nice, then they'll go out and collect it. But uh, further north, then the weather will be that much worse, presumably. Um, and it might not be an option. So, yeah. uh, I know a lot of the, the beekeepers down here, um, well, some of the beekeepers that I speak to and about this sort of thing, say that they rely on the ivy for their winter feeding. Yeah. Um, other people say, oh, I hate my bees getting ivy because it crystallises in the combs. Well, yes, it does. But my bees don't seem to find that a problem. Um, it does crystallise. It crystallises really fast. Mm. Um, but if you have a reasonably healthy colony with reasonable numbers of bees in it, there are plenty of bees usually to re-liquefy re it and feed themselves through the winter and into the spring. Mm. Um, and usually my bees have some left that sort of hangs about and stays there all summer, or practically all summer. Um, as, you know, sugar sugar blocks in the, in the combs. Um, but they... they they seem to deal with it quite well. It's not like, um, well, it's not like mouldy pollen, which they have to sort of dig out physically. It, it they just lick it and, and it goes yeah. liquid and they carry it away. Um, and uh, yeah, mouldy pollen is is a, a bit of a pain in the spring because if you get just one cell on its own, then the bees will tear down the six cells around that one to ah. get that pellet of pollen out and then very often they'll rebuild it as drone yeah um depending on the age of the queen of course um where you get patches of, of pollen they'll they'll d sort of take whole faces of, of comb off back to the septum and then and then again if if they if they feel the need they rebuild that as drone uh just keep an eye on the f on the on the food in in flow um as i say <clears throat> down here we we look forward to the ivy coming on and and generally generally speaking our bees fill more frames than is probably good for them um yeah further north i don't really know what happens i mean mm. might possibly be having to feed them up further they north. might very well have to feed them um and that would have to be something that, that you would have to know from your own 
sort of local association or, local or groups. Local experience. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> as I say, um, yeah, the ivy down here tends to flower from now until Christmas, but um, it's a case of whether or not the weather's suitable for the bees to go out and collect it. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. The window's sort of closing on that, isn't it? Yeah, and the thing is, um, even a short way further inland, ivy has probably probably been in flower for a fortnight by now. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, just, just 10 miles north of here, because that's the way that it seems to work. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, in the spring, the horse chestnut in... Uh, Battle is is a week in front of the, the horse chestnut in Bexhill. Yes. Um, yeah. Which is on the right on the coast. Yeah. Um, battle is what only not nine miles inland. Not even that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know it does it does depend as most beekeeping things it depends where um, you are. Depends on all kinds of things. It depends where you are, what sort of bees you got, whether they're you know any. Um, you know which way the the hive facing even might make a difference yeah. in some places. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many you've got? And... Because you know if if you're if you're in a in a in a cold place or on the on the wrong side of a hill, say, and the sun don't shine on your beehives, then they're going to be a lot less able to get out early and late than bees on a sunny in the sunny side. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, it, as I say, it just depends on so many things. Um, but keep an eye on them. Have a look. So don't yeah, be afraid to open them because it's it's getting on. Yeah. Just still open them up and look at them, can't we? Um, yeah. I mean, you just have to. Uh, yeah, you have to find a means of of gauging how much food they've got. Basically, that's all you can really do. Yeah. Um, how much food should someone? Oh, there's a complicated question because it does sort of yeah. vary, but. Uh, well, it is said that they should have about 20 kilograms, which is, what, 44 pounds Ish. in old yeah. money to see them through the winter. Well, um, it is also said that <clears throat> a standard national brood frame will hold about four and a half pounds of honey. Yeah. So or stores, because um, obviously some of it will be pollen with honey over the top to, to preserve it. Um, so on, uh, that, on that basis, in a, an ordinary national with 11 frames, you need all but one of them full of stores. Yeah. Um, or the equivalent. Um, if you have a WBC, then you probably need to be on brood and a half or double brood because otherwise your bees cannot possibly store enough food to see them through the winter and still have any room. Yeah, for uh, Brad any has, brood has written in and asks, are those green gloves you're wearing nitrile? And he says, like eight, eight mil, if not mind sharing. Well, I don't think they're eight mil, are they? No. Um, they're, um, they are. I know they're touch and tough. They're basically builder's gloves. Um, and uh, they do various grades. And these were, um, oh, I don't know. I'll, 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 get the, I'll have a look at the box. But they, um, we had to go yeah, they, they to do, they are a thing quite, called so glove quite durable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that and sounds they just sort of, They usually <laughs> split down the thumb and between the thumb and first finger um but yeah uh i mean i can i'll i'll find i'll get the box and i'll bring it along and then we can put the the actual sort of grade that's it yeah I mean, it was i seem to think it was sort of 900 stroke 302 or something like that but i mean i you know i that's a that's really a guess yeah um but they were that's that was yeah you know, I mean they were roughly thirty three pounds for the box, um, and uh, yeah I mean they, they are yes they are nitrile um, they're powder free 
and beyond that, I can't really say. Um, so they are, I mean, they are, they are thick enough to, to not rip really easily when you're handling frames and things. Yeah, yeah. But you can, st I can still feel, I mean, when a, when a bee sort of hovers there and I can feel the cold draft yes. on the back of my finger. Yeah. So they're not so thick that you can't feel anything, but they are thick enough not to rip when you handle in That's the, the, the end of lugs and yeah. things, which a lot of the thinner gloves, they just sort of stick to stuff and, and tear, yeah. um, which is really frustrating because you then have to uh, take them off and, and, and bin them and then, and then you can't get a new one on because your hands are all sweaty, so they don't fit, you know, they won't they won't go on so you have to then yeah, wave yeah. your arm out until it dries out and uh, it just takes forever so yeah that's uh, as i say i'll i'll find i'll find a box bring it along and we can actually show you what they are so we'll get back to everything get back to brad on that one yeah i think it was i think it might have been elliot's but i don't know mm -hmm. sort of elliot's gloves or something. i don't know Anyway, we'll find. We'll find yes. Well, I mean, if you, if any of your any of you people, um, you know, including even Josh's mum, who who <laughs> ticks up about two hundred of our of our two hundred and three <laughs> viewers, um, would like to ask a question, I will do my best to answer it. Um, I can't say it'll be the proper beekeeping answer because, after all, I'm not a proper beekeeper. Um, but, you know, I, I have been fiddling about with it for, for 30 years. So, you know, there are some things that I, I feel I might know. Um, but uh, anyway, yes. Yeah, so any, any questions, you know, just generally or, or even about specific things, you know, um, I'm happy to do my best. Leave them in our comment section and below. If you leave them in the comment section, I'm not au fait with this... this um, <laughs> YouTube technology stuff, so <laughs> I'll probably get all the terminology wrong. Right. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you have been, and if you haven't, we don't like you anyway. <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't panic, Mr. Mannering. <laughs> and we'll see. And we'll see everyone and on. Bye. We'll see you whenever. Probably next week. What have I got? An hour and a half. Good God. So I think we <laughs> we need to edit that. <laughs> I think we got. It. And you can't just cut out the swear words because there haven't been any. No, no, it's all... Oh, hell. <laughs> it's all gone for a burton this week. <laughs> Thank you for watching our weekly update video here at Mantle Farm. If you enjoy what we do, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share our videos.